I'm Barbara Probst. I'm an artist working with photography. I'm born in Munich in Germany and I live in New York since more than 20 years. I think my photographic work comes right out of uh, the work as a sculptor. Because looking at something from different angles, from different points of view, is a sculptural approach. It's a way of looking that reflects the, the interest of a sculptor, the view of a sculpture. Even though in, in the end result of, uh, of um, my work is always uh, very flat, it's, it's photographs and there's nothing more flat than a photograph. The viewer is looking at the different photographs of a series, comparing them, assembling them, joining them together. It is a very active and deliberate process of, uh, of looking and by doing that uh, the viewer uh, creates the notion of a, a three-dimensional impression in, in their mind. And that's a sculpture. I'm not interested in a certain kind of photography. I'm interested in photography in general, in photography as a phenomenon um, that, that seemingly and supposedly um, depicts reality. And this, this link uh, to reality is actually um, what, what um, made me want to learn more about photography and want to work more with photography. That's why I worked through all these different genres to look at it from different sides at photography and learn more about it. Genres are really interesting to me because they are categories on, or fields in art which um, have been worked through by artists but over centuries. They have been expanded and reinvented these genres and um, it's so useful to look at what has been done already. For example, the still life paintings of the 17th century, which I looked at before I started my still lives. Um, it's such a rich field of still life painting. So useful to uh, see that and, and study what is there, what has been done already. And then I, I, bring, on, I bring in my own ideas, uh, my own vocabulary, my own resources and, and make my own still life. By doing that, I'm, I, I hope to bring in uh, something that isn't there yet something that provides an addition to the, to the genre. I get a set of pictures and these pictures are uh, all comparable because they are from the same moment. By comparing these pictures, um, I, it, it becomes quite clear that the link between reality and photography is very thin and fragile because every picture from this moment um, gives me more or less a different take of this moment. But even though they are all equal, none of them, none of these images um, is more true or uh, more false than any others. They are equally truthful. They all have the same value. It's kind of a, a democratic principle. And then it, it becomes apparent that the, view, uh, the viewpoints and angles and settings of the cameras and the framing and all these uh, things determine the picture. Um, it, it's not what it's in front of the camera that determines the picture. It's, it's um, it's the photographer behind the camera that decides how reality um, is translated into an image. 
it is the subjectivity of the photographer which determines the image and not the objectivity of the world. I create these lies. Um, photographs are basically lies and I'm, I'm trying to get um, to something um, which you can call the truth with these lies. But maybe ultimately we can find the most truth in subjectivity actually. When we look close, more closely um, at the conditioning of our perception of the world, our feeling and, and our sensitivity, our current mood and our uh, life experience, our knowledge and all these influences that um, come into play uh, when, we, when we perceive, when we look, when we perceive the world. Uh, when we look at all this conditioning uh, more closely, I think we can get closer to the truth. We tend to believe that, uh, that the, the world is the way we see it. Um, but if we take our subjectivity into account, we are aware that we only have one of many possible uh, views on the world. I feel the closest, I would say, to uh, Godard to Jean-Luc Godard, his thinking and um, his ideas of movie making, extremely inspiring. And um, I think I look at uh, photography in a similar way. Uh, he looks at cinema. I mean, he's he's breaking the rule rules, or he was breaking the rules wherever he could. A really good example is when Godard makes uh, in in the middle of the movie uh, makes the pro protagonist turn uh, to the camera and address the viewer we watch from our comfortable seat we consume the movie and in the moment uh, the actor addresses uh, the viewer the idea of of that uh, uh, of the, of the viewer consuming a movie totally collapses. It's, uh, makes, it makes you as the viewer completely uncomfortable. You, you become an active and aware part of the movie. I think that's really um, revolutionary what he did. Uh, in many ways, of course, it comes from Bertolt Brecht. Um, he took that, but the way he, he uh, translated it in, translated it into movies um, is very inspiring. Perhaps because I'm a woman, I choose mostly female models, female protagonists. I, when I did nude photography, I chose a female dancer and it was a very um, straightforward, simple, very enjoyable way of, of working together. I also feel that the, the female protagonists somehow stand in for me in, in the shoot. Germany is a very, very male-dominated uh, society and I think it had made me um, even more focused and determined as an artist. As a young artist, um, I, it was really important to, to find this thing in my work that caught all my attention, all my uh, energy, all my love and all my um, determination. I cannot really name it, um, but it's like a key that unlocks all your curiosity and all your focus. If you need to find that, once you find 
what I found, you're not on the surface anymore. You go deeper and deeper into it. Actually, truly, your own. And uh, it's a very uh, constructive and rewarding thing. It's like in life, if you if you find something good, you you go for it.